So, allows maintain it real, how many of y'all might have kept your cool if your own family member was killed by the police? Because the Massey family just showed us what real power looks like in court, and it's all about to change the game. So, picture this. It's July 6, 2024, and Sonia Massey is just at home with her family. Everything seems normal, right? But then she hears something outside and gets scared, so she calls 911, thinking they will help her out. Little did she know that call was going to turn her entire world upside down. Next thing you know, Deputy Sean Grayson rolls up to the Massey. Sonia was probably thinking she was about to be safe, but no, she was very wrong. Now, I can't tell you every single detail that went down, but believe me when I say what happens next will shock you. In the courtroom, what happened in the next few minutes changed the Massey family's life forever. So, in that clip, the courtroom was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. Everyone was just holding their breath, waiting for that body cam footage to start rolling. The Massey family was sitting there, looking like they were about to face their worst nightmare, and let me tell you, they did. The video starts to play, and at first, it's just Deputy Grayson arriving at the NY residence, but then things went from zero to 100. Sonia's there, probably thinking she's about to get help, but instead, Grayson starts yelling at her like she's the criminal. But get this, Grayson immediately threatens Sonia, saying, you better effing not or I swear to God I'll effing shoot you in your face. Can you believe that? A police officer, someone who's sworn to protect and serve the people in the courtroom, the Massey family is losing it. Sonia's mother is shaking. Her dad looks like he's about to jump out of his seat. And Sonia's kids are crying. It's heartbreaking to watch, but it gets worse. In the body cam footage, you can see Sonia apologizing, trying to duck for cover. She's terrified. And then, just like that, Grayson fires three times. One of those bullets hits her right in the head, and it's brutal, quick, and shocking as hell. But here's the kicker. After he shoots Sonia, Grayson doesn't even try to help her. He just stands there and says, no, she's done, you can go get it. The Massey family was beyond devastated. They're angry, they're hurting, and they're demanding answers. How could this happen? How could someone call for help and end up, you might be wondering, what if they didn't have this footage? Well, Ben Crump, the famous civil rights attorney, has something to say about that. He stated, if it weren't for the body cam footage, we wouldn't have known this happened, and that's the honest truth because without this video, who knows what story we would have been fed, this footage isn't just changing things for the Massey family. It's blowing the lid off this whole case. People are very, very mad. They're in the streets demanding justice, and even the big shots in the White House are talking about it. And let me tell you, this isn't just about Sonia Massey anymore. It's about every black person who's ever been afraid to call the police for help. It's about every cop who thinks they can do whatever they want and get away with it. It's about an entire system that needs to change. But you better hold on to your seats because we're about to dive deep into Deputy Sean Grayson's past. And let me tell you, it's messier than a pig in mud pun intended. Now, you thought the body cam footage was bad? Well, this guy's history is going to make your jaw hit the floor. Let's start with the fact that Grayson has jumped around jobs more than a frog on a sidewalk. We're talking about six different law enforcement agencies in just four years. Six. Most people can't even change their hairstyle that often, but this guy was swapping badges like they were going out. Now you might be wondering, maybe he was just looking for the right fit. But listen, this isn't about finding the right fit. This is a person who couldn't hold a job to save his life, and why couldn't he keep a job? We're about to buckle up because we're diving into that. First of all, Grayson got kicked out of the U.S. Army, and we're not talking about a minor slap on the wrist here. No, he was discharged for what they called misconduct. The Army doesn't just throw people out lightly. This had to be some serious stuff, but there's more. Grayson didn't just have one DUI. 
He had do this in 2015 and 2016. This guy decided that drinking and driving was his new hobby, and you know what's even like, who's doing the hiring? Are there any background checks? Can't they see these records? Oh, and let's not forget that at the time he was with the King Cade Police Department, they showed him the door, due to the fact he refused to stay within the required radius, I mean, come on, you can't even comply with a simple rule about where you're supposed to live now, here's where things get very interesting, after all this mess, bouncing around like a pinball and accumulating duas, guess what else happened? The Sangamon County Sheriff's Office decided, hey, this looks like a stand-up guy, let's give him a shot, there was nothing in Grayson's history that would lead us to believe he might commit this act. We handle thousands of calls each year without incident. We've had three officer-involved shootings in the last 24 years. So, my message is that we are still the same sheriff's office. The individual who did that is in prison. He is going to face justice within the criminal justice system. And I'm not making these things up. The same guy who couldn't keep a job got kicked out of the military, and was caught drunk driving twice was given the power to patrol our streets and make life or death decisions, and you know what? It gets worse, at one of his previous jobs, Grayson was instructed to take high-pressure decision-making classes because he couldn't follow instructions during a car pursuit. They knew this guy had trouble making decisions under stress, and they still put him on the streets, the Massey family is in shock, and can you blame them? James Wilburn, Sonia's father said, this guy Grayson should have never had a badge, and he should have never had a gun, Mr. Wilburn is absolutely right, but let's talk about what this means for everyone, how in the world did someone with Grayson's record become a deputy? Who's checking these applications? Who's doing the background checks? Are they just handing out badges at the dollar store now? This isn't just about Grayson, this is about an entire system that is broken, if someone like Grayson can slip through the cracks, how many other bad cops are out here wearing badges? The Massey family has been through hell and back, but they're not about to let Sonia's death be for nothing, they've gone from crying their eyes out to standing tall and demanding justice, it's like they found the strength that they didn't even know they had. Remember how they were falling apart watching the dash cam footage? Well, now they're out here making noise and shaking things up. They've been holding rallies, talking to the press, and making sure everyone knows Sonia Massey's name. It's like they flipped a switch from grieving to warriors at one of their protests. Sonia's father, James Wilburn, stood up with fire in his eyes and demanded justice, he wasn't just asking, and the crowd was right there with him, chanting Sonia's name like a battle cry, now, you might be wondering how the Massey family is holding it together through all this, well, they're smart, they know they need help to deal with all, so, they set up a GoFundMe, but get this, it's not just for attorney effies or anything like that, it's for mental health counseling, they're trying to raise $100,000 to ensure everyone in the family can get the help they need to process this nightmare. Let me tell you, they need it. Sonia's son, Malaki, has been hit so hard he said, I don't have words. I feel sick. Can you imagine losing your mother like this and then having to watch it on video for the world? It's enough to break anyone. But here's the thing. It really got people talking. The Masseys found out that what they thought happened to Sonia wasn't the whole truth. At first, they thought some random person broke in and killed her, but finding out it was actually a cop hit them like a ton of bricks. I got a call from the hospital, Malaki said. I never got a call from them before. They told me my mother had been shot in her eye, and it came out her neck. They didn't tell me who they were, just that someone shot her. They never told me who shot my mother, even though I think I was the first person to find out, I had to go tell my grandma myself. That's all he can say, and they kept asking, who? They wouldn't tell him at all. So now, they're not just fighting for Sonia, they're fighting for every black person who's ever been afraid to call the police, they're fighting for transparency, accountability, and change, and they're not backing down, 
you should have seen them at that rally with Ben Crump and Reverend L. Sharpton. They were standing there, shoulder to shoulder, looking like they were ready to take on the world. Sonia's sister was there, holding up a picture of Sonia, reminding everyone what this fight is really about. The Labour Council said it has sympathy for the Massey family. I would have never in the world thought the police shot my mother,